Level zero, the mountain sleeps. Its slopes are green with forests, its summit white with snow. To the eye, it is a mountain, nothing more. No smoke, no tremors, no roar. But deep below, magma waits, frozen in chambers or moving in silence. Geologic time is patient. Dormant does not mean dead. Mount Fuji hasn't erupted since 1707, but scientists know it will erupt again. Its silence is only temporary. Yellowstone hasn't erupted in 640,000 years, yet its caldera still breathes heat, geysers, steam. A sleeping supervolcano beneath America. Silence fools us. Cities rise on the slopes of dormant volcanoes. Naples at the foot of Vesuvius. Quito at the base of Pichincha. Populations thrive, forgetting that quiet isn't safety. This is level zero. The calm before the mountain wakes. Scientists classify volcanoes as dormant if they haven't erupted in centuries, but still show signs of potential. Extinct volcanoes, by contrast, are unlikely to erupt again, yet very few are ever truly declared dead. Level 1. The first whispers arrive as gas, steam hissing through vents, sulfur stinging the air. The mountain exhales, fumaroles dot the slopes, thin columns of vapor rise. Locals smell rotten eggs carried on the wind. Kalawea in Hawaii does this constantly. Even when it isn't erupting, its vents release carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. The gases burn throats, they corrode metal, they kill crops. In 1986, Lake Nios in Cameroon showed the danger. Carbon dioxide, released from magma below, built up in the water. Then it burst out in a silent wave, invisible, heavy. The gas rolled downhill into villages. 1,746 people suffocated in their sleep. A volcano can kill without fire. It can kill with breath alone. Volcanologists monitor sulfur dioxide closely. Rising SO2 often signals magma moving upward. Satellites like NASA's Aura now track gas plumes across entire continents, giving warnings long before eruptions. Level 2. The mountain begins to shake. Small earthquakes, not once, not twice, hundreds. Seismographs spike, each tremor a fracture. Rock breaking, magma forcing its way upward. These aren't normal earthquakes, they're clustered, shallow, focused around the volcano's core. In 1980, Mount St. Helens in Washington rumbled like this for weeks. Small quakes cracked the summit. The ground swelled. The mountain bulged outward. The world waited. This is level two, the warning that something is moving below. Volcanic tremor is a steady vibration, different from sharp tectonic quakes. It acts like a heartbeat, a signal that magma is flowing through cracks and tunnels beneath the surface. Level three, the first explosions don't always come from magma. Sometimes they come from water. Groundwater seeps into hot rock, superheats, expands, detonates. The blast carries ash, Steam, shattered stone. Small, sudden, deadly. Mount Ontake, Japan, September 2014. It was a clear day. Hikers filled the trails. Without warning, the mountain exploded in steam. Ash rained down. Rocks the size of fists fell from the sky. 63 people killed. No magma ever reached the surface. These are phreatic eruptions. Hydrothermal bursts, deceptive because they give no time to flee. Unlike magmatic eruptions, hydrothermal blasts often have no seismic warning. That makes them the hardest to predict. Scientists now use high-sensitivity sensors to monitor pressure changes in volcanic lakes and hydrothermal vents. Level 4. The first true eruption begins with ash. A grey plume rises. The wind carries it. It falls like snow. Roofs coated, fields buried. Children cough. Airports close. It looks soft. But volcanic ash isn't dust. It's pulverized rock and volcanic glass. Microscopic shards with razor edges. They slice lungs. They clog engines. They collapse roofs under weight. In 2010, Ejafjalla Jökull in Iceland erupted like this. No lava reached cities. No pyroclastic flows. Just ash. But it spread across Europe. Airspace shut down for six days. 100,000 flights canceled. Millions stranded. Billions lost. A single volcano in Iceland silenced half a continent's skies with nothing but ash. Ash clouds are tracked by volcanic ash advisory centers worldwide. Jet engines melt ash particles at 1,400 degrees Celsius, 
turning them into glass that fuses onto turbine blades, causing total engine failure. Level 5. The eruption grows louder. Bursts of molten rock, glowing arcs hurled into the sky, explosions spaced minutes apart, rhythmic, predictable. This is Strombolian activity, named for Stromboli, Italy, the lighthouse of the Mediterranean erupting almost continuously for 2,000 years. At night, tourists watch fountains of fire against the dark sea. It looks spectacular, but each glowing bomb of lava can kill. Each arc of molten rock can ignite homes. It is fire as performance, but also fire as warning. Strombolian eruptions eject scoria, gas-rich lava fragments. They cool into porous black rock, lightweight yet sharp, used in landscaping and barbecue grills worldwide. Level 6. The mountain stops spitting and starts pouring. Rivers of molten rock flow downhill, orange, glowing, relentless. They move slowly, but they do not stop. They bury everything in their path. Forests ignite, roads buckle, neighborhoods vanish. Hawaii, 2018. Kalawea erupted, lava fountains 200 feet high, Rivers of fire covering 13 square miles, 700 homes consumed, entire subdivisions erased. You can run from lava, but you cannot save what it takes. People watch as their houses ignite, cars swallowed, pools boiled, farmland lost forever. When the lava cools, it becomes new land. Black rock, where green fields once stood, a map rewritten by fire, lava flows move anywhere from a few feet per minute to 20 miles per hour. Depending on slope and gas content, scientists map flow paths with drones and thermal imaging to predict which towns will be consumed next. Level 7. The eruption turns vertical. A jet of ash and gas shoots skyward, not hundreds of feet, not thousands, miles, straight into the stratosphere. Day becomes night. Lightning flashes inside the ash cloud. The sky crackles with volcanic fury. This is a Plinian eruption. Named for Pliny the Younger, who described Vesuvius in 79 AD, he watched from across the bay as the column rose like a pine tree into the heavens. Pompeii buried, Herculaneum smothered, people frozen in ash, bodies preserved for 2,000 years. Food, jewelry, even bread still intact beneath the layers. Plinian eruptions are beautiful from a distance, but deadly up close. Roofs collapse under ash, engines fail in midair, Lungs fill with shards of volcanic glass. The eruption doesn't just choke a city, it changes the sky itself. Ash spreads hundreds of miles, flights cancelled, trade halted, sunlight dimmed. Plinian columns can reach over 30 miles high. Mount Pinatubo in 1991 sent ash 22 miles into the atmosphere, the largest eruption of the 20th century. It cooled Earth by nearly 1 degree Fahrenheit for two years. Level 8. Then comes the avalanche. Superheated gas, ash, rock fragments, moving faster than cars, hotter than fire, pyroclastic flows. The deadliest weapon of a volcano, they surge down slopes at 400 miles per hour. Temperatures reach 1,000 degrees Celsius. No one escapes. No one survives. Mount Pele, Martinique, 1902. The city of Saint-Pierre stood at its base, a thriving port of 30,000. The volcano erupted. A pyroclastic flow raced down. In minutes, the city erased. Only two survived. One, a prisoner in a stone cell. Mount Vesuvius did the same in 79 AD. So did Mount St. Helens in 1980. It's blast sideways instead of upward. A wall of heat and ash flattened forests for 19 miles. Pyroclastic flows leave nothing to rebuild. Just silence and ash where life once stood. Pyroclastic flows are so hot and fast that they create their own weather. Scientists have recorded volcanic lightning inside these avalanches, static electricity sparked by billions of ash particles colliding. Level 9. Sometimes the eruption empties the mountain, the magma chamber drains. The ground above has no support, and it falls. The summit caves in, the landscape reshapes, a crater miles wide replaces the peak. This is caldera collapse. Sudden, permanent, transformative. Crater Lake, Oregon is proof. Mount Mazama erupted 7,700 years ago. The peak collapsed inward, leaving a caldera five miles across. Today, it's filled with pristine water, a national park born from destruction. Iceland's Askja caldera formed the same way. 
Indonesia's Toba caldera spans 18 miles. Some collapses swallow entire valleys. Caldera collapse doesn't just change scenery, it rewrites geography. Rivers reroute, lakes form, habitats vanish. Caldera eruptions are so massive that they're measured in cubic miles of material. The 1883 Krakatoa eruption removed over six cubic miles of rock, lowering the island into the sea and triggering deadly tsunamis. Level 10. The eruption doesn't stop at the mountain. It spreads across borders, across oceans. An entire region suffocates under fallout. Ash turns day to night. The sun dims. Temperatures fall. Crops wither in the fields. Livestock collapse in pastures. Rivers choke with mud and pumice. Famine follows fire. Tambora, Indonesia, 1815. The largest eruption in recorded history. 100,000 dead in the islands alone. Villages buried in ash. Ships stranded as harbors filled with floating pumice. But the true disaster wasn't in Indonesia. It was everywhere else. The ash and sulfur circled the globe, a veil around the planet. The next year became the year without a summer. Snow fell in June, frost in July. Crops failed across Europe. Bread prices soared. Riots broke out in the streets. In China, monsoons collapsed. Famine spread. In North America, farmers abandoned fields. Families migrated west, searching for land that could still grow food. The hunger killed millions. Not by lava, not by fire, but by silence in the harvest. Artists painted sunsets that burned with strange colors. Mary Shelley, trapped indoors by endless storms, wrote Frankenstein. Cultures changed, literature changed, history changed, all because of one mountain in Indonesia. This is level 10, when a single eruption reshapes not just a city, not just a nation but the entire course of human history. Tambora released 150 cubic kilometers of ash and rock, 40 times more than Mount St. Helens. Its sulfur veil dropped global temperatures by three degrees Celsius, enough to rewrite economies, force migrations, trigger revolutions of survival. Volcanoes at this level don't just erupt, they redraw the map of civilization. Level 11. Then, there are eruptions beyond imagination, super eruptions, explosions thousands of times stronger than Hiroshima, not city killers, civilization killers. Ash columns reach the stratosphere, particles spread across continents, skies darken for months, years, global temperatures plunge, crops fail, famine spreads faster than ash. Yellowstone last erupted like this 640,000 years ago. Ash buried most of North America. Magma flows reshaped the land. The caldera left behind? 30 miles wide. A scar you can see from space. Taupo in New Zealand erupted 26,000 years ago. The plume reached 5 miles into the sky. Ashfall was recorded as far as China, 5,000 miles away. The blast turned lakes into craters, forests into wastelands. Legends in Polynesian cultures may still whisper its memory. Super eruptions are rare one every 50,000 to 100,000 years. But when they come, they don't just change landscapes, they change history. A single Yellowstone-sized eruption could inject 1,000 times more sulfur into the atmosphere than Pinatubo in 1991. That blast cooled the planet by nearly one degree Fahrenheit. A Yellowstone eruption could cool it by 10, enough to collapse harvests, starve nations, end empires before they begin. Level 12. The rarest, the deadliest, the final level. An eruption so vast it changes the fate of life itself. 74,000 years ago, Toba in Indonesia. The largest eruption in 2 million years, 2,800 cubic kilometers of magma. Ash blanketed South Asia. The sun dimmed. Temperatures plunged worldwide. Genetic evidence suggests humanity may have nearly vanished. Some scientists argue the population shrank to only a few thousand survivors. An entire species reduced to a remnant, entire tribes erased, a world balanced on extinction. But not all agree. Some researchers believe the bottleneck wasn't so severe, that human populations endured in scattered regions, surviving the dark years better than once thought. The truth is still debated. But what's not debated is this. Toba nearly reset the human story and it wasn't the only eruption capable of ending worlds. 252 million years ago, the Siberian traps split Earth open. Not one explosion, but a flood of fire, 
lava fields stretching for millions of square kilometers, enough carbon dioxide to boil oceans, enough methane to poison the sky, runaway climate change followed. The result? The great dying. 90% of species were erased. The closest Earth has ever come to silence. This is level 12, when volcanoes don't just destroy cities, don't just collapse civilizations, they reset the planet, erase species, and redraw the map of life itself. If you want to see how the next pages unfold, stay with us and wait for the next video.